As the conflict intensifies, the Central Kerbin Alliance Network attempts to push the envelope with the development of their new K-5 Freedom Fighter. This new fighter is armed with both AIM-7 radar-guided missiles and the new AIM-9 heat-seeking missiles. Currently, D.D. Kerman is taking the craft out for a live-fire exercise. But unfortunately, it will not be very long before this craft will have to prove itself against the Communists. I am Echo-3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. During this live-fire exercise, D.D. Kerman is testing out the new AIM-9 missiles to make sure that they will perform as expected during combat. His target today is an old K-86 drone. Even though the plane is of an older design, the K-86 still is a very maneuverable opponent, and as such, should provide a good test for D.D. Kerman and these new weapons. D.D. is struggling somewhat to maintain a lock on the combat drone, but the new K-5 is proving to be very maneuverable. D.D. gets a lock in FOX-2, but the K-86 is able to maneuver out of the way. DD though, is able to keep on the target six and line up for another shot. And, yet again, the K-86 is proving to be extremely maneuverable. DD is able to get tone again, Fox 2, and the K-86 maneuvers out of the way. DD is able to keep turning and keep the craft right in his sights. Now the craft turns away from him, DD locks on, Fox 2, and this time it's a kill. Fortunately, a combat loadout does include four AIM-9 missiles. The K-5 should be a good match against any of the communist fighters. Didi is reporting that he very much likes the jet. The jet seems to handle very well and is armed with plenty of weapons. If anything, the thrust to weight ratio seems just a little bit low. Other than that, the craft handles beautifully. This craft represents the latest of Alliance technology. However, the communists are working on something some form of new engine, some kind of new drive that may make jet aircraft completely obsolete. The drive technology seems to be something that the communist reverse engineered from the fascist, but the alliance doesn't know how it works. The National Security Intelligence Service has also been working to solve this mystery. They are again asking help from the Space Center, this time to transport some kind of classified cargo. It is believed that the Intelligence Service has found something that will now make it possible for the Space Center to try constructing their own Kraken Drive. The relationship between the Intelligence Service and the Space Center has been very cordial. Hopefully, this level of cooperation will continue, and the Alliance will be able to keep the Communists in check. Recently, I was asked why I preferred to use the braking ground rotors as opposed to the rotors from the Airplane Plus mod. Well, here I am using a set from Airplane Plus, and they are a lot better for long distance flights on Kerbin because you can use time warp. The plane only flies 230 meters per second, but at times 12 physics warp, that's not too bad for these flights all the way around the globe. In the cargo hold is hopefully the missing piece to making a working Kraken drive. Once the intelligence service confirms what they have, they will deliver plans for a Kraken drive to the space center. At this point, there's no evidence that the communists have got theirs working yet. In the hangar, Alliance scientists and engineers attempt to reconstruct a communist-style Kraken drive. According to the intelligence service reports, the drive works by some type of magnetic interaction. The forces involved are not fully understood, but it appears that the communists have been trying to develop something that the fascists developed. They're developing a craft that uses some form of Kraken drive and then has some form of laser weapons. The Alliance is still very far behind the Communists as far as laser technology, but the Communists don't appear to have the power source to really make their laser technology work well either. And maybe these Kraken drives will require more power too. Engineer Bill Kerman walks over to begin working with the device. According to the Intelligence Service, there is some type of adjustment that can be made on these magnetic docking ports. Bill attempts to reposition the piston there is no effect on the device. Now he's looking for the controls on these docking ports. Supposedly they can be adjusted as well. It looks like he's found the controls and he begins adjusting the magnetic forces. As he makes his adjustments, the device begins to move. So far it isn't very much, but it is moving on its own. After adjusting the magnetics a little bit, Bill thinks he might try moving the piston and seeing what effect that has as well. He adjusts the magnetics 
and moves the piston forward to see what that does and the craft takes off. The device shoots down the runway and explodes. There's nothing left but a few pieces of the frame. It looks like the Alliance needs to do a lot more testing. While Bill and Bob decide to do more work on the Kraken Drive, Jebediah and Dee Dee take off for a secret mission to destroy the communist flying saucer. Dee Dee will be flying the new K-5 and Jebediah is in the K-101 armed with bombs. As Jebediah and Dee Dee fly towards the desert airfield, communist MiGs fly out to intercept them. Dee Dee will engage the MiGs while Jebediah makes a bombing run on the saucer. Jebediah flies low and to the north while the MiGs fly up to engage Dee Dee. So far, the plan is working. Dee Dee engages the MiGs. He fires a missile and looks like he's downed one already. And he quickly engages the second and knocks it out of the sky as well. All that is left to do now is to destroy the saucer. Jebediah will attempt to use his bombs and Dee Dee can make some strafing runs. Jebediah is not the seasoned combat pilot that Dee Dee is and he struggles to drop the unguided bombs onto the target. But Dee Dee on the other hand is able to score a hit. Dee Dee comes in and strafes the saucer with his cannons. The saucer doesn't appear to be completely destroyed, but it is damaged. Jebediah will make one more pass with bombs, and then the two will bug out and head home. This is the only prototype that the communists are known to have. Hopefully, this damage will put them weeks or months behind schedule. If you have noticed that the combat looks a little different this time around, I have updated from BD Armory Continued to BD Armory Plus. Seacan said that there were conflicts, so I installed the mod manually, but it seems to be working very well. Bombing their saucer may just have provoked the communists to retaliate. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network must remain ready for the communist response. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Cold War. I will see you next time.